Hello everyone. In this video, we will be focusing on the appendages of bacteria. Appendages of bacteria. Okay. Appendages. What do you mean by this appendages? Appendages are nothing but structures seen on the body surface with varying functions like pili, fimbriae and flagella. Got it? So, appendages are, they are uh, structures seen on the surface with varying functions. Okay, examples in the case of bacteria. Pili, you have heard of pili, P-I-L-I -I, or pilus. P-I-L-U-S, pilus is the singular form and pili is the plural form. Okay. Then, in the beginning, I would like to compare pili and fimbriae. The bacteria, pili and fimbriae, both the structures are there. But what are the difference between these two? Let's see. Here you can see a bacterial cell with all the three uh, organs. Okay. This one is flagella. This is flagella. This is this elongated structure. They are pili. And small small structures fimbriae. Okay, let's talk about or let's compare pili and fimbriae. Pili, what is the definition of pili? Pili, uh, as you can remember, they are short helical structures and they are like microfibrils. They come out of the surface of the bacteria. So these are helical helical or uh, microfibril like structures they come out of the body of the bacteria but what are fimbriae fimbriae they are bristle like structures come out of the cell of the body cell of the bacteria okay then what about the length of this pili they are shorter than they are shorter than this flagella got it but fimbriae they are tiny structures they are tiny and they are smaller than our pillars got it then what about the composition they are formed of a, a particular protein called pilin pilin p-e p-i-l-i-n pilin got it but in the case of fimbriae fimbriae are formed of fimbrin protein fimbrin okay so that's about the composition then the rigidity rigidity uh, pillars are more rigid than fimbriae that means uh, this uh, fimbriae are less rigid okay and what about the motility this pillars or pili they are motile structures hmm? it can move they can perform crawling as well as twisted movement but in the case of uh, fimbriae they are non-motel structures these are non-motel structures then okay they are non-motel then what is the function of these two in the case of pili they are mainly for the transfer of genetic materials from positive strain to negative strain of bacteria okay i will show that picture can you see this here this is a positive strain and this is a negative strain in between this you can see one elongated bridge like structure what is this this is pillars okay so here what is the function of this pillars here the pillars comes from this negative strain so this pillars is of this negative strain and this pillars is connected to a particular area okay a particular receptor region for what for getting this plasmid from the positive strain got it so this is a type of uh, reproduction which is known as conjugation conjugation here the conjugation canal this canal is formed of pillars so that's the function of our pili uh, they also perform what uh, they also help in uh, means what to say support or motive uh, for the movement etc okay but in the case of fimbriae generally they are non-motile mm? and they are especially for what attachment to the substratum 
they are mainly for the attachment to any substratum it may be on the body of the host okay then then let's talk about their um, receptors i told you in the case of pillars they uh, have certain receptors for the attachment they attach uh, in certain particular areas of the host body or particular area of uh, another bacteria positive strain of bacteria okay so they have certain receptors for attachment but in the case of uh, fimbriae they have no receptors at all because they are just like structures for the attachment okay and for the anchoring they send an anchoring structures and the no receptors are there no need of such receptors for them always it is uh, just like our uh, leg okay just for uh, attachment and anchoring but then they are mainly this pile are found mainly in gram negative bacteria this is found in gram negative bacteria we will discuss the gram positive and gram negative bacteria in a separate video then they are formed of pile are formation the formation of the pillars as you can uh, remember you know that that is this pillars is produced by or its production or its synthesis is uh, governed by a particular plasmid can you see this plasmid this plasmid is responsible for the production of this pillars got it so it is governed by the plasmid gene but in the case of fimbriae this fimbriae are their formation is governed by bacterial gene that means original dna of the bacteria has certain genes and those genes govern the production or the formation of what are um, fimbriae but in the case of uh, uh, pile it's not like that okay then can you give some examples for this uh, bacteria having pile example for bacteria having pile are Neisseria gonorrhea N E I Neisseria gonorrhea Okay it's a causative agent of gonorrhea disease then those with fimbriae most of the organisms have fimbriae even then one example shigella 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 dysentriae okay shigella dysentriae which is a causative uh, agent of diarrhea actually it acts on the host intestine within the intestine what happens you know they produce a kind of toxin and that toxin uh, causes what um, this dysentery okay that's all about uh, the comparison of fimbriae and pili let's talk about flagella as you know they are whip like microscopic motile structures present extracellularly but originate intracellularly from the basal body and help in movement and locomotion got it so here you can see this it is a uh, it's a whip like structure and it is found externally but it develops from originate internally there is a basal body inside that forms the basement for the production or the formation of this uh, whip like structure flagellum okay this flagellum its presence was first reported by enkelman 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 and uh, one more scientist his name is jansen 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 okay jansen engelman in the year 1868 and he in 1887 okay so these two scientists actually reported the presence of what flagellum in bacteria it helps the bacteria to go and move around we know that it it involves a series of symmetrical undulating waves passing from the base to tip of the flagellum it beats independently you can see that you see this is an undulating motion 
this movement is known as undulating mo movement and it is a symmetrical it, that movement is symmetrical okay uh, and that passes it starts from its base it starts from its base and it passes towards its end okay that is undulating motion but one more motion or one more uh, movement is there that is known as a rotational movement rotational movement you can see that in this bacteria you see that a rotational movement this is the undulation and this one is undulating movement this is the rotational movement got it this uh, um, flagella can rotate at a speed of or it can perform that uh, rotational movement at a speed of 1500 revolution per second okay how much 1500 revolution per second that is actually it is far faster than even the fastest formula one race car engine okay it has but its size you see its size is only 40 nanometer in diameter only 40 nanometer in diameter but it can uh, exhibit the rotational movement or at a speed of 1500 revolution per second got it and for this uh, movement energy is required that energy is uh, obtained from ATP molecule ATP adenosine triphosphate molecule types of assemblies they are first one is The flagella originate in two ways that is in certain bacteria they are developed or originate only in the polar region in other bacteria they are found all around the body that means all over the body okay so this type of two types of assembly are there first one is known as the polar assembly this is known as polar assembly and this one is known as uh, lateral assembly this is lateral assembly okay then one more thing based upon uh, the what to say the development of or according to the emergence of flagella we can divide bacteria into four according to the emergence of flagella or the area of emergence of uh, flagella we can divide them into four. First one is known as monotrichus monotrichus okay mono means one trichus means related to polar region that means here only one flagella arise from one pore something like this you can see here only one uh, flagella from one pore example is vibrio cholerae vibrio cholerae it's the causative agent of cholera disease then one more is there pseudomonas 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 originosa Okay, which is the causative agent of cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis. That's a type of disease. Okay, so these are the two examples given for uh, the monotrichus form. The next one is the lophotrichus. Okay, what are lophotrichus organisms? Or I mean bacteria. In lophotrichus, flagella are arranged one or both the poles in bunch. That means here either at one pole in bunch or on both poles in bunch okay such condition is known as lophotrichus 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 condition example is h pylori h pylori h means helico pylori helico pylori here in this bacteria a bunch of flagella are seen at one pole only at one pole got it and second one is the spirilla another one is spirilla spirilla in spirilla we can see bunch of uh, means uh, flagella one on either side that means on both the poles so these are the two examples given for lophotrichus Next one is amphitrichus. 
amphitrichus that's a uh, um, amphitrichus means one flagella each from both side it's like this one flagella each from both sides example is aqua spirillum serpent aqua spirillum serpent serpent you just by heart this names okay here only one in the case of aqua spirillum serpent only one flagella okay is active at a time here one flagella is active at a time got it then one more group is there its name is peritrichus 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 what's the meaning of this peritrichus means peri peripherally the whole body is covered by means of flagella such bacteria are known as peritrichus forms okay example a very common bacteria that is e coli is an example for peritrichus form then one more is there salmonella typhi have you heard of this salmonella typhi and this salmonella typhi which causes typhoid fever okay these two bacteria <coughs> number of bacteria are there with peritrichus condition they have uh, all over the body the flagella can be seen okay here you can see the movement of bacteria here you let uh, you just see the movement is just opposite to the action of the bacteria can you see that once more i will show that here that is the action if the movement undulation of the uh, flagella occurs in the in this direction but the animal moves in this direction let's take a look deco can you see ah, yeah this is a movement of something like a propellant the flagella acts as a propellant okay here you can see the rotational movement i told you two types of motions are there one is flickering movement whip like movement and second one is a rotation movement here you can see the rotational movement of bacteria here this is the rotational movement and this is one that whip like movement flickering movement here this one is the basal body okay this is plasma membrane and this is cytoplasm here it is fixed this basal membrane just like the basement of uh, the uh, during the construction of house okay basement of buildings and uh, here you can see uh, h pylori this is it, this is spirilla okay spirilla i i told you lophotrichus it is lophotrichus that is it has a uh, flagella on both poles bunch of flagella on both poles na here you can see this is spirillum okay or spirilla it is a lophotrichus form and again one more i'll show one more this one is helica helico pi pylorus this is helicopyloris helicopyloris here only at one pole a bunch of flagella can be seen okay these are the two examples of what the lophotrichus group of bacteria that's all about the bacterial appendages in the next video we will discuss about the gram positive and gram negative bacteria till then bye